Hi, and welcome to this Plant Factory and Plant Catalog tutorial. With the Plant Factory integration plugin, which is included with the professional and enterprise version of Plant Factory, and with the full plant catalog, you can easily convert all plant materials into native Redshift materials. To use this new feature, you will need Redshift 3.0.46 or up with the new Open Color IO Color Management and Cinema 4D R23 or up. We plan to extend Redshift support to older Cinema 4D versions in the future. Here I am in Cinema 4D R25, and before I add a plant, I need to set the render engine to Redshift. This is important, because else the plugin does not know for which render engine it should create the materials. Now, using the Plant Factory menu entry, I will open a plant that was exported to the procedural TPF format, and in this case, I'll go with a plant from the plant catalog collection. After the plant has been loaded, I can go to Edit Plant and adjust any available plant parameters. If you forgot to select Redshift as the render engine before you loaded the plant, changing any parameter will always trigger both a plant and material recomputation. So you could still go back to the render settings, change the render engine to Redshift, and then edit the plant to force a material update. And while the plant is still procedural, the plugin uses a lower resolution proxy mesh for shorter computation times for each change. To then get the final quality mesh and the texture maps extract to the project folder, I need to convert the plant to a Cinema 4D object. In the conversion dialog, I need to select my project folder, and then I can choose to convert the plant either to a static or to an animated mesh with wind. This animated mesh can be a baked point cloud animation or a rotational bone rig. Specific to Redshift is the sprite node setting. This will put any alpha maps in the material into a sprite node instead of connecting the alpha maps to the regular opacity channel of the Redshift material. The sprite node drastically improves the render times of overlapping material alphas, which is a very common scenario with leaves on plants, for example. So we suggest using the setting for best performance, but because the sprite node also does have a few limitations in other areas, which are described in Redshift's documentation, you can still uncheck the box to receive materials with the default opacity alpha handling. Now I can click Convert. And for static plants, the conversion is quite fast and will take just a few seconds. When converting an animated plant, though, the conversion duration will obviously depend on the frame rate and the number of bones and the animation duration you did set up in the conversion options. Let's check out the materials that were created. We have a full native Redshift material graph for each material, with all the texture maps linked to their correct slots, including leaf translucency or two-sided materials and more. Your plant is good to go to be rendered with Redshift out of the box. We will add more features to our material conversion with upcoming releases, and we hope you enjoy this first iteration of our integration with Redshift. Thanks for watching and happy rendering! Music